Let us go back to the Six Sigma equation and see how the SIPOC diagram relates to it. If you recall your algebra lessons back in college, which is only a few years ago, correct? Can you identify which is the dependent variable? The dependent variable. Is it your y or is it your x's? In this equation, the dependent variable is your y. What that means is the value of the y depends on the value of what you plug in to the excess. Again, the value of the y depends on the value of what you plug in to the excess. If y is the dependent variable, your excess, therefore, are the independent variables. Now, following that logic, which is the output? Is it the y or is it the excess? The output in this equation is your y. And therefore, the output column of your SIPOC diagram represents the y. In our example, the final output is the cooked rice, and that is also the y in this equation. We can say that in this example, the y in the equation is the cooked rice. If the output column of the SIPOC diagram represents the y, what column represents the excess? The excess are your inputs, and of course we have the inputs column, plus the process steps, which is the third column. Therefore, the excess in the six sigma equation is being represented by the inputs and process column in the SIPOC diagram. Now, what does it mean, Rex? What it means is, for every process, there is at least one output. And the quality of the output of the process depends on the inputs and process steps. Now, in our example of how to cook rice, let us say you follow the correct procedure, but some of the inputs are missing. Or your inputs might be complete, but some of the specifications of the inputs are substandard. The question is, will you attain the desired Y, the desired output? The answer is no. How about, let's say, you have complete and correct specifications of the inputs, but you didn't follow the correct process. Will you attain? Will you reach? Will you get the desired Y or the desired output? Again, the answer is no. All Six Sigma projects are guided by the concept of the Six Sigma equation. All projects start by identifying what the project Y is, which is either process defects or processing time. And then you look for all of the excess in the process, which by now we know are all of the inputs and process steps involved in the process. The next step is to identify which among the inputs and process steps are the root causes of the problem or we can say are the biggest contributing factors why the process is experiencing many defects or long processing time. And then what we do is we implement changes to the identified root causes, monitor the project Y, and see if it has solved the problem. Let us have a simple example so we can visualize how the Six Sigma equation works. Let us say because of the community quarantine, you found a new hobby of growing plants. You're now a certified plantito or plantita. You bought three plants, but after a week, two out of three died. You wondered what happened, and since you've been recently trained in Six Sigma, you use the Six Sigma equation to identify what the root causes are. 
when we use the six sigma equation, we first identify what the project Y is or what the output is. And in six sigma, project Y are either process defects or processing time. In our example, the project Y is the plant died. It is a defect. Next is to identify the inputs and process steps, which are your excess. The inputs in our example are the following. The quality of water, the quantity of water, the watering can, the plant, the plant pot, the garden soil used, and the location of the pot. The process steps are the following. Get watering can, get water from faucet, water the plant in the morning and afternoon every day. What we do next is we analyze the inputs and process steps together with information coming from experts, from books, and from other resources, and identify which among the excess are the root causes. Now, based on all of the data and information we have gathered, we have identified the following as the root causes. First, the plant pot. Upon inspection, we found out that the plant pot doesn't have a hole, which will act as a drainage. Second is the location of the pot. We placed the pot inside the house, but we found out that the plant need at least two hours of direct sunlight. The third root cause is a process step, which is water the plant in the morning and afternoon every day. We found out that the specific plant that we have only needs watering once every four days. After identifying the root causes, we then implement changes to all of the root causes to correct it and see if the situation or the output or project Y has improvements.